So let's use this Firebase service. As I said, simply just as kind of a dummy backend because it's easy to get started with it. And for our needs here, it's free. Check out the pricing page on firebase.google.com slash pricing to learn what's included in the free plan and when it's going to cost money. That's especially important, of course, if you plan on using this in a production environment, so for your real application. No worries though, if you stay in the free plan, you actually can't be charged, you'll just be limited once you exceed the free limits, which of course you also don't want to encounter in your production ready application. Now enough of the talking about the pricing, it's free for our needs. So let's click on go to console. For that you'll need a Google account. So that is something you'll need to create before you can continue. And on that console, you can now create a new project here. So let's create the project. I'm going to name it React My Burger. You can choose any name you like. And then you choose a country or region here. And you can choose the country where you're located. This won't affect where the data will be stored in the end. And then click Create Project. Now, as I said, this will now configure a backend project for you, which automatically gives you some REST API endpoints and a MongoDB-like database, which you can use to store data so that we don't have to write any server-side code. The console is going to look like this. Now, no worries, you don't need any deeper Firebase understandings here. We're going to use the database because we want to store data. And Firebase has this syntax where the API endpoints are directly mapped to endpoints or to tables, you could say, in your database. So it's super easy to get started storing data there. Now, this is the API endpoint we're going to use. So you, of course, have a different one for your project. But this is the endpoint where we can send data to you and then it will automatically be stored in that database. Still, we won't be connecting to the database directly. We're just sending HTTP requests and Firebase is doing the mapping of HTTP endpoints to the database. That's the cool thing about this service. Now, for this to be available, there's one thing we need to set up under rules here. On database rules, you should set read and write access simply to true. Now, by default, it's only enabled for authenticated users. And this makes sense for a production ready application, but we haven't implemented user authentication yet. So we have no authenticated users. So for the moment, let's turn this to true so that everyone can read or write. Of course, not something you want for your real application, which you ship. At least that's the most likely use case that you don't want to give global read or write access. Make sure to publish your updated rules and with that, we're already ready to go. That's all. We don't have to configure anything else. We can get started and we can start sending HTTP requests to this endpoint or some nested endpoints as you're going to see. Now with that in the next lecture, let's dive right into that and let's start sending HTTP requests to our backend here.